Hi. So today I'm filming in a kitchen because we're going to talk a little bit about the items that you need to have in a preparedness kit. Remember, September is National Preparedness Month, and so we're going to continue with that theme and kind of share some of the things that you need to have available around your house in the event of an emergency. So let's take a quick look around the kitchen and see what we can find for our emergency preparedness kit. So one thing that households need is a dry chemical fire extinguisher, like one uh, right here in this box. Now, ideally your fire extinguisher would actually be out of the box and in a place that you can quickly get to it in the event that you have a small fire uh, that starts in your house. This could be, for example, on a fire stove or uh, in a trash can or a small uh, fire. So you're ideally gonna put this in the kitchen, maybe under the sink or above the fridge, somewhere where it's handy and you can easily access it. You might also have one of these in the garage uh, and you might wanna have one on each floor of your house. Again, for small fires, in the event of a large fire, you wanna get out of the house as quickly as you can. Uh, so don't try to fight large fires, um, but if there's a small fire, before it spreads, you might, if you have one of these available, you might be able to uh, fight that uh, and, and prevent that from spreading. Uh, what else might we have? Oh, so above the, the stove here, we actually have a smoke alarm. Now this one's still in the box, uh, so you'll wanna make sure you take this out and you're not gonna wanna put it on the stove, but you're gonna wanna put it on the ceiling, uh, some places where there could be um, smoke opportunities. So definitely wanna have one in or near uh, bedrooms so if you have a hallway that's connecting all of your bedrooms you might want to put it there and you also might want to put it somewhere where there is a potential for fires for example in your kitchen uh, or other places where there could exist a potential for fire so it's always good to get these and this one's a 10 year so the battery lasts for 10 years and generally it's good to check these once or twice a year I like to check mine on the days or the around the time when the time changes uh, so that you know that it works and works well. Uh, so as we keep looking uh, around here, oh, one thing that you might have in an area that's again prominent is a first aid kit. This is a very small and handy kit. It has a number of things in it like bandages, uh, topical medicines and wound dressings. You might have this in your kitchen. You can also have it in a utility closet. Again, you want to put it somewhere where you can find it in a, in a pinch. And if you use something out of the kit, make sure that you replace it so that your kit remains fully stocked when you need it. Okay, another thing. Oh, this is kind of handy. Another thing that uh, you might have, particularly in Kansas, is an emergency alert weather radio. Now you might say, well, why do I need that? I got a cell phone. Right. But what happens if a storm takes out the telecommunications system, even if it's only temporary? You're going to be left out in the dark, literally, without a means of knowing what's going on. An emergency alert weather radio gives you the ability to now get the communication that you need in the event of a severe weather emergency. This radio not only has a battery, but also has a hand crank so that no matter what the situation is, you can have access to the information you need to stay safe. Uh, they're pretty handy. This one's actually got a flashlight. It's got weather alerts. It's got an AM FM radio and it even charges solar as well with a hand crank. So there's lots of opportunities for this to have power. So uh, another problem with your cell phone is the battery drains and you might not have it uh, and the power goes out and now you can't charge it. This has several means of getting power so that you'll always have the information that you need. See, what else do we need? Oh, over here. So this looks like a smoke detector, but it's actually not a smoke detector, it's a carbon monoxide detector. Again, you wanna take it out of the packaging and you wanna put this in a place where there's a potential for carbon monoxide. That could be in your garage or just somewhere on the lower level of your house and maybe also in your upstairs or somewhere where there's also bedrooms. Uh, and this will go off in the event that you have carbon monoxide leaking in your home. Carbon monoxide is one of those weird things that doesn't have a smell and so it's important to have a detector uh, because you can't detect it from a smell or any other sense. That's basically it. These are the things that we recommend uh, as a minimum for things to have in an emergency preparedness kit. There are also some other things that you could add to an emergency preparedness kit. I would encourage you to go to ready.gov on the internet for more information on items that you would want to include in 
an emergency preparedness kit in addition to the things that we've discussed here today. That's ready.gov and that will give you all the tips that you need to stay safe, not only during National Preparedness Month, but throughout the rest of the year. This weekend, the American Legion Post 81 right here in El Dorado, Kansas, is going to present and welcome the community to a very special uh, opportunity, and that is to visit the American Veteran Traveling Tribute. This is a life-size replica of the Vietnam War Wall Memorial that is in Washington, D.C., and it has been traveling the country, and the American Legion Post 81 right here in El Dorado, Kansas, is going to bring it to El Dorado for everyone in El Dorado and the surrounding communities. Uh, there's information on the city's website and several other websites um, about the tribute. So American Legion 81 invites everyone in the community to come out to the American Veteran Traveling Tribute uh, anytime this weekend to check it out and to pay your respects to those who paid the ultimate price for our freedom. And of course, I've been talking uh, for the last couple of weeks about Gold Fest, which starts on Saturday. Uh, make sure that you purchase your button. If you haven't, there's still time. Um, but all through next week, there'll be events throughout El Dorado and the surrounding area, um, some of which require a button to attend and some of which require a button for a discount. Um, but be that as it may, there's a lot of great activities and events. Go to our website um, for more information on what is all planned, when it's happening, where it's happening, uh, so you can get the most up-to-date information uh, about the Gold Fest, which ultimately culminates on Saturday of next week with our downtown celebration and then finally the concert in the evening. Okay, so that's what we got on things to know, what's happening in El Dorado this week. Um, it's National Preparedness Month, so be prepared and stay safe. We'll see you next week. And make sure that it's stocked with all the things that you need. And if you use something, make sure that you make sure that you can get it open first, right? This is very challenging, but be that as it may, make sure that you can get into it. So open it a couple times. Oh, you know what? There's seals on it. So it's always good to get the seals off before you need to get in the first aid kit so that you don't have to fight it and try to figure out what's wrong with it. Music